Hey, what's up guys? Luke here from Screen Fiends, and today we're going to look at That Dragon Cancer. That Dragon Cancer is an autobiographical account of Ryan and Amy Green's um, experience of raising their son and his journey, tragic journey, with cancer. In this video, I want to look at the game, but not just that, I want to look at the use of games to explore deeper narrative. So without further ado, let's get into this. I've got to admit that when I first saw the bold title of this game, I was put off from playing it. It sounded like a daunting task, but my main reasons really come down to two things. The first stems from the idea of using games purely as a form of release. And secondly, and more personally, cancer is a frightening thing, and I'm sure many of us have had some experience with it, either personally or through a loved one or a close friend. In fact, the game was released the same year that someone very close to me had passed away from cancer and a mixture of other health issues. But I was always curious about this game and I've always been of the attitude that games are just as eclectic and as valid as any other art form. So I finally got around to playing this game almost a full year after the game was originally released. And I knew that it would be a tough game to play thematically, but I didn't expect it to hit me as hard as it did. I mean, the last time I've cried at anything, well, any films or games or books or anything like that, was in 1994 when Mufasa died in The Lion King. It's true. However, this game really did hit me. There were some moments in this game that I just punch you right in the feels. Though the game has a very simple presentation, its beautiful use of sound and clever editing techniques make the game a wonderful and at times scary, auditory and dreamlike experience. I feel a dream is the best way to explore such deep themes. The game often forgoes scene continuity, but instead flows seamlessly from one emotional set piece to the next. This is the same way we often experience our own dreams, while our emotions often lead us on journeys that our conscious mind struggles to understand. You see, the game isn't just about Joel and his eventual tragic submission to cancer. It's a journey of comprehension, of emotional turmoil, and of Ryan and Amy finally coming to terms with the inevitable. Throughout the game, we experience this through various set pieces that are analogous to where Ryan and Amy are emotionally. Sometimes they are literally lost in a notion of hopes and fears. One scene that really stands out includes the diagnosis that Joel only has so long to live, as the room begins to fill with water. I'm sure there are more than a few people that can relate to the feeling of being so completely overwhelmed by something that it isolates them from everything else. What really hit me emotionally, however, was the part in which there are hundreds of cards lying around a hospital ward. You can examine each and every one and find personalised mementos from people who have experienced similar loss in their own lives. It was beautiful, it was poetic, and it was sorrowful at the same time. I find the most violent games often fail to teach us the frailty and finality of life and the consequences of morality. And for games to be taken as a serious art form, games like That Dragon Cancer are a must. Have you played That Dragon Cancer? Was you affected by it? Are there any other games similar to that game that you can recommend? If so, leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. And for your fix, keep it Screen Fiends.